Hello and welcome to Steps to Success. Today we're going to look at how to access the delinquent tax list through Hamilton County Auditor and also how to look at the Hamilton County Sheriff's Sale pre-foreclosures. First things first, we'll go to hamiltoncountyauditor.org which takes us directly to this site. Then we'll go to Downloads. Then we'll hit Current Unpaid Accounts, which takes us here. Then we'll go to the first date you see, which right now is October 1st. Uh, pretty soon November will be up. So you go to un Current Unpaid Accounts, you click that, and then we already have one. So we'll click it, and we'll get to open this up. Takes a little second. All right, now here we go. So from here, you have a whole bunch of information, and it gives it gives you every current unpaid delinquent tax account, and this is the unpaid amount. So it goes from five dollars you know, to one cent all the way up to $20,000. So it can be very easy to waste your time going through each and every person. But the best thing to do is actually to format this list to make it more accessible for you, easier for you to read. Um, the parcel number is right here, owner name, owner two, address, property class. We went over that. If you've already looked at the how to contact Hamilton County rental registration, you know that property classes 510 is single family, 401 is a multifamily. Um, so from here, first thing we do is go and format this. So we want to focus on the leads that are most likely to sell. So somebody who's $1,000 behind in taxes they're a lot less likely to sell than somebody who's $5,000 behind. And just to let you know how the rules work in Hamilton County, uh, you have to be at least two years behind on your tax payment in order for you to be up, in order for the county to be able to put the property up for sale. So if someone owes $4,000 in taxes a year, they have to be at least $8,000 behind in order for the county to be able to put the property up for sale. So we want to get people who are at the $5,000. So what we'll do is highlight this. Then we'll go to conditional format. Then we'll go to greater than. So we want anybody who's greater than $4,950. So as you can see, that takes away a lot. So these are the only leads that we'll focus on, not the ones, all the ones that aren't highlighted, we, we're not focusing on those, only ones that are highlighted. So that limits us a lot. Now, another thing that helps us even better is if you go and Cell color rows. So what we just did is now only the leads that have this showing are the ones that are show first. There's over 30,000 leads in here, but the now only the ones that are actually have this showing will be the ones that will show. So, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that you have leads that are no longer delinquent. So, you don't need all these. You will go all the way down. You have to sort through all these if you did not do that format. And so, guys, I hope I've made that clear to you. Um, obviously, you can rewind the video so you can format your list. But this makes it easier. So, now you have to do is follow a process. And guys, I put this stuff together because nobody showed me how to do this. And I want, you know, anybody who's working in the Hamilton County area to be able to, um, especially when you're first starting out, 
to be able to start out with a process because when you have a process, it gives you more faith. You know that, you know, as long as you commit yourself to a process, it's guaranteed to work. So once you have all this, now you need a process. How do you actually, you know, Google or how do you actually figure out the address of the property? Because it doesn't give you the address on this sheet. This is something I had to figure out. I was confused. But, you know, the parcel number is actually how you can figure this out. So first thing we'll do is go back to this page. Just press on this. Uh-oh. Okay. All right. Go to property search. And now instead of searching by street address, we'll search by parcel ID. And we'll go back to this. And the first one we'll do is this one right here, Vogus LLC. So this is the parcel ID. We'll double click that. Put this in here. Voila. So this is Mount Washington. They bought it for 175,000 back in 2011. Um, so what I would do to see if this was actually a good lead or not, um, I would first thing I would do is go to payment detail just to check 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 the taxes because Mount Washington does have pretty high taxes. Okay, so they're pretty a couple years behind on taxes, so they you know could be up for a a sell to be sent to the sheriff auction sometime. This is their first half total. They were due to pay this amount total. They're due to pay this amount right here, including interest and penalties. So they're a couple years behind and they don't have a delinquent payment plan set up. That's another thing. Look for this. If they have a delinquent payment plan set up recently, then you probably will back off. But this is actually a good lead. So what we would do in order to figure out who actually owns this property since the LLC owns it. Um, when I first started, you seeing LLCs would deter me, but it actually is a great opportunity because a lot of young investors, when they first start, um, they don't look at, they don't look at and try to figure out who's the owner of LLC. When it's just as simple as going to Ohio Secretary of State business search. So I guess that probably wouldn't help you. Let me go ahead and go all the way out. Ohio. Actually, let me. What you want to type in is Ohio Secretary of State Business Search. You want to type this into Google. And then what will pop up is this. So first thing you'll do is click it. So now this pops up. And our property owner that we need to figure out is Volga's LLC. All right, here it is. And the property owner is this guy, Clarence Odell. Okay, so from here, what do we do? Well, I'll tell you one thing we should do is make sure that this property isn't already for sale or listed for sale anywhere. So let's go ahead and figure that out. All right doesn't appear to be for sale it will be listed somewhere in here it's sold for 2011 it will be listed you will see it all right so it's not listed for sale that's great from here we have to keep track of the of this information right so like how do we keep track of the people we're contacting so what we want to do is put the information to a spreadsheet you could be working, you know, and just keeping these leads and skip tracing them, getting their phone numbers and just contacting them and not keeping track of anything. Uh, but that wouldn't be beneficial for you in the long run because you wouldn't know who's calling you back and you wouldn't have any records of your conversations. So in order to keep track of things for free, um, what I first did was develop a lead, what I called a lead tracker. And I, this lead tracker is actually available for you in 
the book so you can actually download this and figure out how to utilize it even more by clicking you know the link up here uh, but you know download the link in the, in the description to actually utilize this for yourself but first thing with that we'll do is get the person's name so his name is Clarence Odell all right and if there were two owners you would have put the second owner name right here but that's not the case phone number once you get that phone number you'll put it right here email if you get their email put it here and then property street address you're going to put this address right here this is the owner name and address melon name and address you only want to focus on this address because these two can always differ but this one will always stay the same so focus on that address and you would go put that Cincinnati Ohio and 45230 is the zip code 45230 properties counties the hamilton estimate those are things that you'll look into more but delinquent tax amount this is very important this can be useful for you so you can always look right here but never take this number because it's more than most likely it's going to be wrong um, always refer here payment detail and this number right here this number is always the most accurate number when it comes to public records so always go here to figure out um, how much the owner owes in taxes. So we'll go back here, put that back down, and then purchase price. How much did this guy buy it for? I believe it was 175,000 back in 2011. I believe that's right. Um, yeah, 175 back in 2011. So we'll go back here, 175K and the date was 2011 and then you know there's more things number of bedrooms bathrooms square footage all those kind of things you'll put in this is a four family four unit so there could be one bed one bath each unit or there can be uh two bed one bath each unit those are all things that you'll put here and you'll put that it's a multi-family you'll put all the information you get and then eventually your cash off so once you get this down here you go back here and the good news is guys it's a rinse and repeat process so you already got it in your sheet from there you know mark it whatever color you want maybe you want to mark it a red just mark it out you know maybe you want to mark it something else whatever you want to mark it mark it that and then you'll be good so Let's leave that be, and you'll go on to the next one, and on to the next one. All right, guys, let's jump right into Hamilton County Sheriff Cell Leads. This is a great lead source for free, of course, and these leads, um, there's two different types. So you can have pre-foreclosure leads, you go to this site, and you can have Hamilton County tax leads. So the delinquent tax sales, you would click right here and you would press view all. And guys, also this stuff is so important because again, nobody ever showed me how to do this. I taught myself all of this and I'm sharing this with you because I want, this is what I would have liked to seen when I first started. Um, so please share this like and um, sub subscribe if you really like this content and find it useful and also share it because somebody else can find it useful um, so once you go once you go to the link on tax sales and there aren't any tax sales um, just go over to upcoming foreclosures because there usually are a lot of those and the delinquent tax sales are a bit more intricate it would definitely be a longer video for another time uh, delinquent uh, the date of sale though you will go to 1125 because that's a little further out let's hit that 
no records to display is what they say, but we'll press go. And then boom, voila, it pops up like magic. All right. So from here, this is the address of the property. So they actually give you the address so you can look it up by the address rather than the parcel name. And this is the minimum bid, meaning that this is usually how much has to be paid to either clear the loan balance or just that's how much the bank is requiring. And the appraisal amount is how much the auditor, uh, Hamilton County, they went out and they you know, assessed the property's value at this amount. Uh, this is the location of the property and this is the date at which the property will be held for auction. And this one is November 25th, 2020. All right, let's jump right into it. So we got 6946 Diana Drive. And I'll, one last thing, if this is checked, withdraw, that means that the owner of the property may has um, satisfied the loan balance. So we'll go ahead and 6946 Diana Drive. Go right back here, start a new search. We'll go to 6946. Diana, hit search. Okay, I spelled that wrong. 6946 Diana Drive. There must be two ends. Sometimes the county does that. I feel like they mess it up on purpose, then I won't be able to figure it out. <laughs> All right, so look, this is good. Total tax doesn't really matter. Usually the mortgage company pays the taxes. So this is the property owner. First thing we do is get the property owner name. And remember, guys, the owner name is always reversed. So this is actually her first name, and this is her last name. So we'll go right here. Owner first name, Bonnie. So we'll leave that there. And Bioger is what we'll take. And there's only one owner. So we'll leave those blank. Phone number, once you get the phone number, you'll put it here. Email, once you get that, you'll put it here. But the address, what was that address? Remember, address is always taken from up here. And honestly, guys, always take the address from the, the county auditor site. Don't take it from here because as we can see, it sometimes is wrong. All right, so we'll go back here. Property street address. Go ahead and put that in. 6946 Diana. We got Cincinnati, Ohio, and I believe it's the lovely 45239. Oh, another thing, guys, make sure you check to make sure this property is not for sale. Almost forgot. So 45239, it is not for sale. It would have popped up, but. We'll go ahead and go right here. Four, five, two, three, nine. Hamilton is the county. Property estimate, you know, not available right now. Delinquent tax, we're okay on that. Purchase price, how much did they purchase it for? 88,000 back in 2002, okay. 88K back in 2002. Cool. And all this is information that you also will have to put in your cash amount. And you know, for this, the delinquent tax, something that you would want to keep track of, maybe just put in a little note, is 52,000 can be for the minimum bid. And how about this? Instead of keeping track, we just go and put insert column to the right and minimum bid. Okay. So now for your um, pre foreclosure leads, you'll be able to put have minimum bid and you'll be able to put right here 52,000, whatever that minimum bid says right here whatever this column says you'll put it here that way you can keep track so the the importance of that guys and to keep the reason i keep stressing it is because if you have somebody who's you know 
the numbers only work at 50,000, but the minimum bid for it is at 52,000, then they may not be worth your time um, to go ahead and contact because you can't even satisfy the mortgage at 50,000. So just make sure you keep track of that minimum bid amount, okay? Other than that, guys, you you got it. Um, you'll just you'll go back and you'll just go one after another, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and in another video, I'll definitely show you guys how to do delinquent tax sales. But the date of sale, you'll go ahead and, and click the other one, and as you can see, they have a couple up, just one. I hope you guys found this video useful and helpful. If so, make sure to like and hit the subscribe button and also share for somebody else to help them in their day. Thank you for your time and take care.